everyone. Uh, I'm Ron Waxman, and with me we have David Spence, Sharif Sultan, and Ido Weinberg. And we are at the V44 Symposium. I just came out from a very hot debate on the lipid management of the patients today. And obviously we have different kind of opinions, and maybe uh, we'll just focus on the latest and greatest, and I'll ask David Spence in kind of summarizing few words what is your take today on lipid management for our patients? Uh, so there was a lot of talk today about statins, and it's very important to understand that it's not all about pills. Uh, lifestyle is extremely important. The Mediterranean diet uh, was shown in the 60s in the seven country study to reduce coronary risk so much that on the island of Crete, the coronary risk was 1 15th what it was in Finland. In the 4S trial in, in, in the mid-90s, uh, simvastatin reduced recurrent coronary events by 40% in six years. And a year later, the, the, the Lyon Diet Heart Study showed that the Mediterranean diet reduced co recurrent coronary events by more than 70% in, in four years. 40% in six years with statin is half the effect of the Mediterranean diet. So doctors are very much underestimating the importance of diet. They're also very much underutilizing azetamibe. Azetamibe blocks absorption of cholesterol, whereas the statins reduce formation of cholesterol. The combination is synergistic. Uh, azetamibe 10 milligrams with atorvastatin 10 milligrams lowers the LDL cholesterol as much as 80 milligrams of atorvastatin, and it should be used much more, especially in patients who are statin intolerant. The PCSK9 inhibitors can reduce LDL cholesterol by 60% and markedly reduce events, but they're extremely expensive. And so we really need to be thinking more and more about diet, Mediterranean diet, zetamide, the highest dose of statin tolerated. And when we do that in patients with carotid stenosis, with the aim of obtaining regression of plaque, it reduces events by 80% in two years. This, this is a marked reduction of the residual risk seen in the randomized trials. So you're advocating both Mediterranean diet and Medi drugs. You're not Medi like excluding right, drugs. Right, Mediterranean diet and drugs. And Dr. Sharif Sultan, we heard from you a completely different view, uh, kind of critic, put, it, put the studies on a very high critic. Maybe if you'll summarize uh, your thoughts about the management of patients who had the hyperlipidemia or dyslipidemia. Uh, very good. Um, in 2008, I published the first paper about the uh, hyperhomocysteinemia at the 21st century cholesterol. And I basically said that a tablet per day will not get the doctor away. You have to change your lifestyle. It's the only way forward. Cholesterol is a very important molecule in the body. It prevents infection, prevents depression, uh, prevents a lot of other uh, bacterial inf uh, uh, problems, viral uh, problems, prevent uh, intracerebral bleed, and prevent cancer. So you start playing with the cholesterol molecule, you start having side effects from this. And this is well documented in a lot of stop trials that have been mentioned today. My whole idea is that there's two types of prevention, primary prevention and secondary prevention. In primary prevention, tablets don't work. The only thing is lifestyle changes. Change your lifestyle, off your couch, start walking, drink a lot of uh, fluid, avoid refined sugar, and you'll do fantastically better than anything else. Secondary prevention, there's a lot of uh, debates about it, and this was a debate, but in primary prevention, it's very clear. Never take anything for primary prevention apart from changing your lifestyle. And I hope I'm going to not annoy anybody by saying that I don't prescribe statin because there's a lot of things that I don't agree with, not because of my own vision, because of our publication. And what we have seen that the lower the LDL you do, the younger you die. And the higher the LDL, the longer you live. And you could check that in the British Medical Journal on 75,000 patients that we published in 2016. So Dr. Weinberg, you're seeing a lot of patients with PAD, uh, very robust clinic, a lot of patients with the dyslipidemia, uh, what is the rationale? You heard like two almost opposing views. Uh, what's your take on that? And also if you can uh, tell us what do you think about the latest data that came with PCSK9? As you well, the thank you for the opportunity to comment on two great uh, physicians and uh, say what I think. So, you know, the bottom line is I think it depends on the patient in a lot of ways. I think for most patients, lifestyle modifications will not work. I think real life 
uh, is sometimes stronger than most patients would like to admit and, and, and oftentimes uh, primary prevention is not where we see these patients. I think oftentimes we meet the patients when it comes to secondary prevention and I think most of us would agree that in those patients there's little argument that medication has been well proven to, uh, to uh, improve both the quality of life, reduce events and also uh, reduce mortality. Uh, specifically the latest data that you mentioned, so the PCSK9 uh, data that just came out a couple of days ago at, uh, at the American Heart Association meeting, uh, the four-year study, specifically the sub-analysis uh, published in circulation about, about 3,000 patients with PAD, we saw that not only was the LDL reduced uh, considerably, but also there was a very robust reduction in events, not only uh, major adverse cardiovascular events, but also specifically limb events with very impressive uh, 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 low uh, number needed to treat between 16 and 30, depending on the specific indication. So if, if it wasn't for the price, uh, like you mentioned, if it uh, wasn't for the uh, need for injections, I think those, uh, the PCSK9 inhibitors would, would take a, a much more a sort of front and center place right now. I think, however, right now, I think the right way to go is probably robust lifestyle modification, uh, diet, uh, activity, which I'm a, a huge proponent of. And for those patients uh, in whom that maybe doesn't work and we need to supplement, then obviously uh, statin medications, the ZMIB, and maybe one day PCSK9 inhibitors. And, so, so and smoking just, cessation. Yeah, well, that's a lot of other lifestyle. But the, uh, and I was advocating that the lower is better with respect to LDL, but again, a lot of things has to be proven on a long run. So let's see if we can come to any consensus. So is there anyone, can we make it, we have consensus that lifestyle and diet is important. I mean, does everybody agree here? Definitely. Not agree. Okay, so is there any patient that you would think that he's eligible to get statins or lipid lowering? Yes, a middle-aged uh, man with a heart attack coming in, they need to take it for the period traffic effect for about nine to um, uh, nine months to one year. I have no problem with that. Patients themselves don't have a compliance with statin. And all the trials show that within five years, all of them have done the, the tablets. And we have a problem with that. And we have to look in this, and I have the numbers. Dr. Spence? Yeah, the PCSK9 inhibitor studies have shown very clearly a reduction of events that continues right down to an LDL of uh, 2 millimoles per liter, which is uh, 38, and with no adverse effects. The, the, the only creatures of the face of the planet that have an LDL above 1 millimole per liter, which is 39, 38, are lions and humans. We don't need much LDL whatsoever to achieve the functions that Dr. Sultan is talking about. Yes. So we disagree on that. There is a debate, and a lot of people are questioning that part. Maybe my last question to you, Dr. Weinberg, with respect to patients who are struggling with lifestyle. I mean, we all say to them, well, keep your diet, uh, but they don't. Uh, do exercise, but they don't. I mean, most of them, I mean, your patients primarily are not doing it. Uh, what is that for you? I mean, what, what is that you're doing on them on a daily basis? Yeah, so I think I, I want to say two things about this. The first is I think that uh, of preventing or, or not giving a patient, not giving a patient medication while we're trying to convince them to improve their lifestyle, I think that could be a common ground that we may agree upon. Because even if we do believe in lifestyle, and I think we do to a point, I think that promoting uh, lifestyle does could take time and not all patients agree with that. So I think that would be a, a place where we would agree to medicate patients. I think that, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I think we all understand the, that humans are humans and our patients uh, sometimes do prefer medication. I think in my personal practice, and I, I, I think you would echo this also, most patients do comply with uh, statins and other medications that I prescribe. Some of my patients I've been following for many years, and it seems like they're they're still on the medications they prescribe, or otherwise the, uh, the, the requests for uh, renewed prescriptions are truly false, which I don't think they are. So so that would be my answer. My answer would be to try to combine it all uh, at all time and to try to see things through the patient's eyes. There's, and there is a, a measure that can be used to markedly improve compliance, and we use it in this process that I call treating arteries instead of risk factors. It's a paper from Wisconsin by James Stein's group, the first author of scorecards, showing that if you show patients pictures of their arteries, they are four times more likely to be compliant. And that's part of the process that we use in treating that arteries. That's scaring effect. That, that's no, no, it's not scaring. It's motivating. It's personalizing. It's not statistics. It's not personal. Good. If I tell a guy, you're 50 years old and you have arteries worse than a healthy 80-year-old, and your arteries got worse last year, he's motivated. 
But as you can tell, uh, we cannot get full consensus because this is a very heating debate. I think the debate will continue on. We need to get more data. There will be more data by next year when we reconvene. So stay tuned. That's what we can give you today. Uh, I'm sure next year will be wiser and smarter. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.